Hey guys, I'm Frank Cox. I'm the Barbecue Pit Engineer, and this is the Smoker Builder Podcast. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy this episode. Brother Alvin says, is it possible to weld carbon steel to stainless steel? The short answer is absolutely yes. Um, I've done that a lot. And actually in restaurant equipment, that's a common practice because we don't want to build the entire fryer out of stainless. We only want the food contact surfaces and the showy parts to be welded to, or to have stainless showing. And as a matter of fact, there is certain kinds of stainless that are called uh, ironized. Um, I want to say they're in the 300 range, like a three something. I can't remember those numbers. I'm not that brilliant. Um, but 316 pops to mind, um, but I don't really know. You might call hear other people call it magnetite or magnetic stainless. Um, there is a way to magnetize stainless lightly, even if it doesn't have iron. For instance, Fastenal on their website says that uh, because of the heat treating process that they're stainless nuts and bolts are magnetized a little bit. In other words, you can pick them up. They're not magnet magnetized, but they they can be like ferrous metal, which will stick to a magnet. You know, while it may not be strong stick, it does still stick. So anyway, yes, you can weld carbon steel to stainless all day long. And as a matter of fact, if you're just work doing this on a smoker project, it's completely okay to not use stainless wire. Um, while stainless wire would be the best bet, um, it's, you're probably not going to want to go out and buy like a bottle of what we call tri-mix, which is a different gas that you got to use for stainless MIG welding. Um, you're probably just going to want to use your, uh, mix 25 or whatever you got. So it's okay to use steel wire and, you know, regular MIG gas, whatever you're going to do, or you can even get. Um, there's actually some brazing techniques like silly bronze is one kind of uh, filler rod we talk about where you can torch weld. If you're just doing some tacks or you have, uh, you have a little bit of, uh, like a small bead you got to run and you want to try your hand at that, or you want to TIG it, um, you can use that, uh, silly bronze It's silica bronze is, is what the, the alloy is, and uh, there's, of course, different percentages of each thing. You just have to talk to somebody way smarter than me um, about that, probably your local welding supply store. Um, the silly bronze will look a lot better. What will happen is, is the weld puddle is going to mix that carbon, that molten uh, carbon steel into the weld puddle along with the stainless, and so you could get some rust depending on the situation that would creep up into that stainless piece, whatever it is, um, contamination, I guess is what that's called, but it'll hold all day long. So it just won't be stainless anymore. So there you go. Hope that helps Alvin. And, and the practice, like the beads, the heat, all that stuff would be just normal welding. Don't overthink it. Yeah, it's just normal. Uh, Alvin Shane back on the uh, stainless thing. Would you use shield or could you use flux core? I would use shield gas. However, I'm not really sure about the alloys on flux core. I know the 32T or whatever the number is. I've got a roll here somewhere. Uh, I don't see it handy. Um, but the flux core that I've used in the past is right behind me. I think this thir this uh, E71T-11 for those guys that care. If you can see the number right there, that's that's what I typically use um, in a smaller amp machine like the Blue Demon back there. I'll use 030 is what I use. And uh, I, I just don't even worry about what the alloy is typically. I just try it out. And the, if it doesn't get like a lot of porosity or something or if it's not something structural, I really don't pay much attention to it. Um, so I'm not really sure, though, how flux core would work. I've always just used shield gas. And if you guys wanted to try to use uh, stainless MIG wire, you can get little rolls like this. It's not really that expensive. The difference is you got to use a different kind of gas. And if you're going to do a lot of that, um, you'll wind up getting a gas called Trimix. Can't remember what's in it. I have a bottle out there. It sits there and gets mud daubers in the thing because I never use it. 
So um, to give you an idea, it's probably not worth buying it. But uh, when we were doing kitchen equipment, we 100% used tri-mix and MIG welding every time we could because it was just a lot easier to deal with than dragging a TIG torch in and super cleaning everything and all of that. Hey, I want to thank you for listening to the Smoker Builder podcast. And real quick, while I got you, I'd like to invite you to join our private community over on SmokerBuilderU.com. That's SmokerBuilder, the letter U, dot com. On that website, it's a private community full of guys like us that are just totally ate up with building and cooking on smokers. So when you join over there, you're going to be set free from all the internet trolls and the Facebook group haters and all of that stuff that none of us like. You can post your build, you can post your cook, you can ask technical questions and get them answered, or you can just join in with the community and have a lot of fun. So also, if you have a special topic you would like us to cover on this podcast, make sure to bring it up while you're over there. Anyway, until next time, keep your smoke thin and blue, and I can't wait to see your success building and cooking on smokers.